Hey everybody, it's Grant, your friendly neighborhood Instruct Lab community member. Today is Wednesday, June 26. It is 8 10 p.m. and got something special for you tonight, folks. We are going to hook up the Instruct Lab iLab command with a tool that I like to use to chat with the models. And I'll explain why I like to use a different tool than the built-in iLab chat command. Well, first of all, I'm a sucker for a good UI. And I think that the Anything LLM tool, which we're going to integrate with today, has a great UI. It also allows you to add RAG capabilities on top of a model that you've already aligned. We'll get into that in a future video. But tonight I just want to show you how to set up the Anything LLM. You, what you want to do is you want to go over to useanything.com and this is completely open source. You can click on the GitHub link. You can download it from GitHub or you can download it from the website. I'm always a sucker for a good open source project. So I'm going to download. Now it does support Mac, Windows, and Linux. Check, check, check. Not only that, it supports Apple Silicon and Intel. All right, so let's download the Apple Silicon version. I'm just going to open this. We'll see what happens here. And this will take just a few seconds. It's going to download a disk image, it looks like. So we'll open that, drag it into our Applications folder. Easy. All right. <laughs> Now it's installed. Well, not yet. <laughs> it's got a copy over 915 megs, so a pretty significant project here. Um, and then we'll get it set up and, and going. All right, so we have that in our Applications folder now. I'm going to open my Applications, click on anything LLM, and we'll get the party started tonight. All right, let's open that. And what we want to do is anything LLM Oh, it read my previous configuration file. I was hoping that I would be able to show you this from scratch because obviously I said I used this. Um, but I'll just go in and show you how to configure everything, okay? So once you get in, let me delete these workspaces actually, and then that'll give us a good representation of um, what it would look like when you first come in. And let's create a new workspace, okay? And we'll call this Instruct Lab. And we'll save that. So now we have an Instruct Lab project, and let's click on the settings icon. This will allow you to change your chat settings. Now, by default, it's going to use um, the system default for chat settings. So you can set that up down here under Workspace Chat, or sorry, LLM Preference. You can set up a global one here. But you can also set it up just on the workspace itself, and that's what I'm going to do. That way you can have multiple workspaces talking to multiple models. So maybe you want to talk with Instruct Lab on one workspace, and perhaps you're playing around with um, Olama, and you want to chat with Olama in a different workspace. So let's change the settings for the Instruct Lab workspace. I'm going to go to Chat Settings, and I am going to go down and choose not local AI, but we want to choose a open AI, uh, generic open AI. Connect to any open AI compatible service via custom configuration. And we're going to select that. Okay. And that is going to use my system defaults, it looks like. So let me show you how to set that up. So you come over here into the settings. You go to LLM Preferences. You want to scroll down and select Generic OpenShift API. And this is how I have it set up. When you run iLab Serve, let's go ahead and do that and serve a model. So let me open a terminal here and let me source my iLab environment. And then let's do an iLab model serve and let's do a model path and let's um, use a trained model actually. So let's go into a recently trained model that I uh, just trained earlier, and we'll go down to Instruct Merlinite Q4 GIGUF, GIGUF, and we'll serve that. And so now that OpenAI compatible server uh, is being served. Let's go back to Instruct Lab and set this up. You can see the 127.001.8000. I pulled that directly from what is displayed here. Uh, but 
you know, the pro tip that I would give you here is that in order for this to work, um, instead of looking at the API, we want to add a slash v1. Um, I'm, I'll make sure that that's in the documentation for people. Um, but you do want to do a slash v1 on the end. For API key, you can put anything you want in there. I probably put Merlinite. And then for the chat model name, it doesn't really matter. I just put Merlin, Merlinite there. We'll save changes. Now let's go back to our workspace in StruckLab and uh, look at the chat settings. And let's scroll down and change this to generic open API. And why I like this particular interface is, first of all, um, I do like a user interface. But second, you can set the temperature to whatever you want. If you're not familiar with what a temperature is when you're chatting with an LLM, the closer to zero, uh, a temperature value is between zero and one. The closer to one you get, the more randomized the response is. The closer to zero you get, the more deterministic it is. And so I like to set it to about a 0.2. Um, you could try 0.3. You could also do a 0.9 if you want. It's up to you. And then you click Update Workspace. And then I'll get into this in a later video, but what is really cool is it also comes with a local vector database. So I could um, actually begin a RAG implementation locally here against the Instruct Lab uh, model that I'm setting. All right. So let's go back and let's start a new thread with this model and let's make sure it's connected. I can say, hello, how are you? Let me see if I can make the font a little bit bigger here for you. Ooh, I can, even better. All right, hello, how are you? We'll see if it connects. And it is, it is talking to my Instruct Lab tuned model. So let's test it out. As you know from a previous video, I actually um, trained the model to understand the value of a flux capacitor on a DeLorean. And I'm doing this as part of a, a workshop that we're working on for an upcoming Summit Connect uh, event. There's one in your city, so make sure to register for that if you want to come in and do this full lab um, that we're building out. So let's ask it, how much does it cost to replace the flux capacitor on a DeLorean DMC 12. Let's ask it and let's see what it comes back with. Boom, Bob's your uncle. It costs $10 million to replace the flux capacitor on the DeLorean DMC 12. So you notice it was very concise here and that's also because I set the temperature um, to I believe a 0.2 or a 0.3. I absolutely love this interface. Again, it is uh, completely open source. It allows me to chat with multiple models to keep threads around um, in my day-to-day, -day, people always ask me, hey, Grant, when you use these models, are you really using the iLab chat command? Well, I'm a big fan of the iLab chat command. I do prefer uh, something like this because it does allow me to copy directly in here. I can edit the response. I can regenerate the response. Let's try that. It'll probably be exactly the same because my temperature is so, down, uh, so low. Um, but I, I do like this UI. And so... As I said in the future video, we're going to get into setting up a, a local RAG implementation here with a vector database, and uh, it should be fun. So this was very easy to get started. Let me show you the difference um, between this and kind of the iLab chat on the command line. Uh, let me source VNV bin, activate, and then let's just do iLab chat, pass in the model, which was um, this instruct lab model, and then this instruct lab train. And I'll ask it the same question. You know, how much does it cost to replace a flux capacitor on a DeLorean DMC-12? And um, this was also pretty concise. The cost to replace flux capacitor is $10 million. If you're interested in how I train that, watch one of my previous videos on the Instruct Lab um, YouTube channel, and you can see how we got that up and running. Um, so the reason I, another reason I like to um, use that other chat fit interface as I have it, uh, you know, help me in my day-to-day -day job with like crafting uh, prose documents, whatever. And, you know, to cut and paste out of the terminal, it's a little more uh, involved. So I get the response that I want or want to further refine and edit in my uh, uh, text editor or document editor or whatever editor I'm using to get a uh, 
a version of this that doesn't have the ASCII tables around it, I actually can do a slash P and then I highlight everything and you know copy it and then paste it in. Whereas over here, like I showed you to copy this, I just hit one button and then I can uh, transfer it in. So I, I'm a huge fan of this. It all runs locally. It is all open source. Um, so check it out. It is anything LLM. Works perfectly with Instruct Lab, which is amazing that you can train your own models uh, locally, add your own knowledge and skills, and then chat with it. Again, I'll show you how I set that up with the workspace chat. Oh, sorry, with the LLM preference. I just set it to a generic OpenAI server. Set it to my local host, colon 8000. Remember, the pro tip here is to add the slash v1. Um, I just used uh, Merlinite and Merlinite. Set the context window to 4096 and max tokens. And that's all there, there was to it. And then we can see in here what vector databases it supports. I'm going to be using Milvis um, in the video for next week um, to show setting up a RAG implementation on top of a, a lined model with Instruct Lab. All right, so that's all for this evening, folks. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope to see you in the Instruct Lab open source community. Just go to instructlab.ai. You can join the community. You can read about the open source project. You can download the code and start aligning your own models locally with your own knowledge and skills. All right, have a good evening, everybody. Bye.